Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Barber. Um, go through, I've got, as of yesterday now, 23 years of experience um, in the food industry. I'm a Purdue grad. Um, been working with soy or soy related type products for quite some time. Um, going on. Uh, yep. So, two products are made at the location that I'm at. One is functional soy protein concentrates. Um, goes into a lot of emulsified meat systems and different things like that to where uh, you're boosting protein or you're trying to hold batters together and things like that. So it's mostly used in those type of applications. Um, just a little piece of knowledge, the plant we have is relatively small, um, but we do use about 85 acres worth of soybeans a day to keep it fed and it runs you know, 350 days a year, 24-7. Wow, this thing is sensitive. Come on. What is it on now? There we go. All right, and then the, across the road, we have a second facility there, um, and that makes uh, lecithins, um, also a fruit ingredient. Uh, one of the best natural emulsifiers out there, holding oils and waters and things like that together at very low inclusion rates. Um, also, lubric lubricity, uh, the cooking, like PAM cooking spray, that's the ingredient in, in it is less than that makes it work. A um, little bit of, on that one, it takes 3,000 acres of soybeans a day to keep that plant fed. Um, we all get our raw materials from somebody else, but that's the kind of goes through. We're just one plant and there's several out there, so it, it consumes a significant amount of acreage of beans and everything just to get the part you need out of it. So what we did, we started out with we had the two facilities. One was built in 1947. The other one was built in 1994. Um, so we needed to, we had one platform when I started was a Bailey Infa 90 system. The other one was a Modicon. And they were just putting in uh, an Illusion interface at the time when I started. So the operators actually had something more than just buttons and panels to use. Um, so we started out and I, I kept fighting to get these systems combined and, and get one system. Um, so eventually we did roll over the Bailey system because it just became too obsolete. Um, rolled that into a Rockwell and still used an Illusion interface. Um, and then protein um, kind of stayed where it was and, and I couldn't get any traction to get anything moving. So, so we took it on ourselves um, at the site to go ahead and do an upgrade to the whole system. Um, Started out, we had about 6,000 total I.O. count, um, roughly, you know, majority of that being instrumentation out in the field, uh, the balance being motors. Um, Protein had, you know, five different Monocon control system, logic systems out there, solvers that were running different pieces of the plant, um, keep it modular. Um, three operator control rooms, main ones that we have out there, um, 21 total remote stations out in the field. Um, less than plant, you know, I had the Infa 90 system. Um, let's say there. Total operations between the two, we have uh, really six people run the two different plants, so three at each plant, and then there's a fourth that's kind of a roaming lead that takes care of the oddball things like wastewater and things like that. So it's a relatively automated process um, for what we do. So why change? Um, we only have two engineers on site, um, me being one of them, and then I've got one that's been working there with me for two years now. Um, and we have a co-op student that we use from time to time that we get to have. So why change is, is to reduce the double work and complexity and everything. So when you have, you know, a PLC of one variety or another variety, then you have an HMI and you have a go-between software. It's just hard to keep up. You've got to program everything three different times to get it in. And then when you do get it programmed, you know, you find out you put a bug in the middle one and you typo it or something, you have to go back and fix it. So it was getting to the point we needed a system that can handle a single entry and then it handles everything from there. Um, we wanted to link the plants together. Uh, plants that never really talked to, to each other, you know, they are separate with everything except for wastewater. Um, but we wanted to be able to have maintenance and people like that that go back and forth across the road or even operators if they choose to change plants, see the same system, see the same look, the same feel, the same way it works, the same coloring on the screens that was even different between the plants, what was running, what was closed, open, closed, you know, things like that was different between the two facilities. Um, uh, eliminate, you know, 50% of the PLC wiring when we did this too. Uh, we put in, we had a very small plant network just for the HMIs. 
and everything else was the serial communication between the PLC racks and things themselves are different PLC to PLC, very limited in what you could send through them. Um, so we're, we wanted to get to a point to where we could get reduce the number of wires involved and get everything talking and, and get on one common system. Um, the other thing, you know, we talk about wanting to be able to move programming from system to system to system. And here we are with 30 years of programming in this PLCs out in this facility that everybody that's been working has added a little piece to or did this, this to, and the plant's not running like it was programmed 30 years ago. And we're, you know, we've done all these workarounds. So this was a time to do a fresh start, you know, clean break and program the plant like it needed to be programmed. Put in the automatic startups, automatic shutdowns, things like that, that you wanted, that everybody wanted but just couldn't do with how complicated the logic had made itself over the years. Um, looking for an industry kind of standard system as well, um, one that can be supported by outside vendors and things like that that we didn't have, so like a one-off sitting in there. Um, also was looking for a drastic leap, you know, from forward in the devices that we could act on. Um, wanted system, think pieces that could be just rolled in, plugged in and, and start going, you know, instead of having to come up with our own custom solutions again. Um, that's about it. Uh, the other thing that we did at this time was we replaced all the motor starters, uh, the heater elements with the smart devices that we can plug in that are now Ethernet and the motors are all controlled by Ethernet IP now versus the input and output wiring going back and forth to them. That allowed us to run motors from anywhere, any processor in the facility versus having to get those physical wires back and forth. You know, this one's all the way on the other side of the plant, and that's the one I really would like that to run. Um, that went away, and now we can just read all kinds of data from the motor. We can get amperages, and we can get everything we really need to get from them. Um, why take it on a house? So, you know, I, I've seen the E300 modules when they put them out, Rockwell's in uh, integration on tour, or automation on tour, or whatever. And, saw that as the last piece of getting our plant kind of interconnected and, and cutting down the volume of work to change all those wires over and everything that we needed to do. Um, we also went, they have a nice uh, e &H, uh, and Rockwell have a nice uh, test bed kind of down in, in Greenwood, Indiana, where they got a complete system put up where that shows both of their product lines and how they work together. Um, so that kind of helped tie it in and, and let me see the HMI in operation and play with it a little bit. So that helped out quite a bit. Um, you know, Rockwell's got a pretty good breath offering and a lot of people talk to Rockwell. So that's why we went there. And also DuPont has, it's part of their preferred supplier program. So that kind of led us to that direction. Uh, the, the plant itself, the product lines that we make are not the growth area, the high margin that DuPont's really looking to expand into. So we're not gonna get a lot of capital. Um, so if I had to go out and hire a integrator or hire different people and everything to do all this work, it wasn't gonna happen. We weren't gonna get that kind of money. So that's why we took it on in-house. Um, you know, plant has limited resources as well, even if you do hire an integrator to try to take the time to do all the work to develop a, a complete airtight scope of work is probably less time than I could actually write the program myself. So that's where we went. Um, so the upgrade scope, we did all the PLCs, the five of the protein, two at less of them. Um, we have typical outages during the summer in both facilities to handle uh, various tasks that need to be done. So these were just bolted onto those outages. Um, so the protein, we had a three week outage. That's typically a week and a half just for the plant needs. So then after that, I had a week and a half to finish uh, and get the control system up and working. Um, same thing for less of them. That was just a week and a half outage and we had the last five days to get it up and working. So. So we developed the logic and HMIs and everything ahead of time. Um, second time around with the less of them plant, we really did a lot of that work with the operators, let them see the screens as we were developing, let them get the input in. And that really helped the buy-in on that side. Uh, replace the iFix, you know, we put all the E300 modules in, we could and configure them to run manually until we could get to the ethernets to them and the new program. So we did all that ahead of time as well. The project approach, uh, biggest thing was getting that list together of all the equipment we had in the plant, uh, motor data and everything like that. You were gonna need stuff. There was no list out there in the facility that we had like that at that point. So between the co-op and myself, that was quite a bit of work um, that we did to get that together. And, and that became also a jumping point then to improve our SAP program to get the same information into it, uh, make one common uh, system. Um, 
Panduit helped us out. Uh, that was a new product line they were coming out with, the pre-bundled cables they wanted to roll out. So we were their first guinea pig, um, and we rolled them into our system as well. That helped reduce the overall installation cost. Um, utilizing some of Rockwell's tools, like the application code manager, uh, was very beneficial to us as well. Uh, cut down engineering time at least in half uh, to develop a program. It puts in all the baseline for you. Um, and say phased install that we put pieces and parts in as we could ahead of time so and get motors and, and do it that way to reduce the amount of downtime we were going to run into. And to save time too, we built some new panels ourselves in-house as well. So uh, network design, um, talked about it's a, a ring type, fiber optic ring we ran through the plant and then we connected them uh, using Cisco and then the Stratic switches which is Rockwell's combination with Cisco. Um, so we put that ring system in now the plant's got a complete PLC, you know, 100 gig uh, connection line now for all the communication to go through, which is something we just didn't have before. So there's a difference in one of the old panels from the 20 years ago or so to the, the other. So uh, difference in screens too. We went with the ISA 101 standards um, to reduce the... Uh, to make it more visual you know, on there, so only color shows up when there's actual problem. So it's just a shot of our wastewater system before and after. So the results. Um, safety was a big thing for us. DuPont is very big into the safety and, and people safety. Um, so we no longer have to access uh, motor starters and stuff to get those amperage readings and things like that. We can pull them right up on the screen anytime we want. Uh, lockout tag out now we only have a single source of power in the tubs we've got rid of the dual source with the PLC power coming in stuff like that um, cultural change like say the screens were a big big impact at first uh, the other thing we have is people believing the data they're getting uh, these e300 modules are now telling us we had four four motors on startup that were telling us you know that they had a ground fault or there was a short between phases and stuff and nobody believed it this can't be true so we kept trying it, and it was a module's fault. We changed the module out, mod next module said the same exact thing. So then we get up to it, and we find out, we start testing, yep, it really was shorted out. It really did have a ground fault. So then we rolled it out to the second plant. When we were doing that one about a year later, nobody questioned what the module said when we plugged them in. If it had a problem, they went out and started diagnosing the motor right away. So getting that data and getting people to believe it is part of that culture. Uh, far less firefighting, too. Um, I've had a vacation that it actually was never called in once for anything PLC or, or plant related to the control system, and that was a first in 20 years, 23 years. So, very happy about that. Um, so, lessons learned, we'll go through all those, but those are kind of specific to the Apple app application. Well, that's it. Thank you.